right guys what's going on I want to talk to you guys about rates out of Laredo and other hard to get out of border towns or areas I'm bringing this up because today a driver with, uh, with PXS Paxton Expedited Services uh, my brother and I's uh, company uh, my brother got him out of there at 70 cents per mile to the van and he posted the driver posted about it in our in our Facebook group our uh, group transportation life wheels wings rudders now of course you're getting people in there bitching saying that that's a shit rate then you're getting people in there that understands what Laredo is and is like okay I get it then, you know, there's people that are just kind of indifferent to it. So, what I wanted to talk about, and I know I've touched on it before, but uh, these rates coming out of these places, like a text, you know, as far as Laredo, Brownsville, McAllen, Far, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, uh, El Paso, uh, and then if you get out into California, you get into Washington, you get into uh, Oregon, Wyoming, Montana, all those places that are way out there that are that's difficult to get out of. The rates there are crap. I mean, they're absolute crap. Now, you have to make sure that you're getting more good runs than crap runs, obviously, for you to make money. And with that being said, you're, you know, your rates going out to those places need to be worth it. Uh, you know, some money, you know, some money if you just plan to relocate out of a place such as uh, Washington and Oregon, Utah, Idaho, you know, some, some odd places. You know, you would prefer to have money on there to just get out of there. Me personally, I should say. So, the thing about Laredo, any of you that are looking to get into this, this is something you need to be aware of because, you know, it's kind of a running line that can be said. All roads lead to Laredo because you will, if you do this long enough, unless you just flat out tell them, hey, I don't want to go to Texas, you're going to go to Laredo. Like, it's going to happen. You're not getting out of that. And more than likely, you are going to come out of there at a rate less than what your normal rate is. Unless your normal rate is already extremely low, then, you know, you're going to match the same rate. And, for example, you know, the, the carrier, the company I was with prior to Barrett, uh, their contract rate was $0.80. Cents. And they're the type that, on longer runs, they start to inch down the rate a little bit just to get that run. But anyhow, that's beside the point. Once we're in Laredo... The norm was coming out of there at 65. I came out of there all the time at 65. Hated doing it. Hated it. And, you know, there's reasons why I stayed there as long as I did. And I've talked about it before, but I don't want to get onto that topic. I'm just talking about the rates in general, what to be aware of. Uh, with Barrett, I have come out of there at 70 cents before. Uh, so, you know what it is when you go there. That's why you want to be at at least your regular rate or a little bit above it to go down there. Uh, and it all works out, you know, if you're, if, you're, if you're watching those things. The thing I'm trying to get across here is that when you go to these places, you need to know ahead of time that you're, if you want to get your regular rate, you're probably going to sit a while unless you just really have one of the best carriers out there that have that inside scoop to get you out at the regular rate. Other than that, it's just not going to happen. That's the reality of the situation. Uh, you know, that post that I'm talking about, there was somebody on there that, you know, commented about, well, you should be able to get at least 80 cents. If that's what you feel, and that's what you do, more power to you. And I agree that the rates coming out of Laredo should be the same as everywhere else. Like all the good areas that we get good rates for. It should all be the same. 
But unfortunately, the idea of Laredo has so many drivers and brokers and carriers scared to death that they just drop it. I mean, it's dropped. I mean, people just act so ignorantly there. And because of all that, it's just created a situation that snowballs into something even worse. And it does. It's, it's progressively getting worse down there. Now, if everybody that went down there, there's a ton of trucks going down there. And you can guarantee there is a ton of loads coming out of there. And if everybody was to stick together and, you know, stay solid on their rates, then, you know, we'd be fine. But that's not going to happen. So I'm not, that. this isn't me suggesting that we all stick together and do that. I mean, that's what I wish would happen, but that's not going to happen. That's so I'm not even trying to say that. Uh, the bottom line is, is that you need to know what you're getting yourself into when you go there. Uh, you know, not many people want to talk about the rates they get out of there because they know it's shit. Like, that, that, I guess that's another point of this video is a lot of these, a lot of these drivers, they're going to lie to you. They're going to lie to you about what they get. Uh, you know, some people, some people have no problem being transparent and, and I try to be that way. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are certain things I talk about that I cringe a little bit because you know, I'm waiting for the negative backlash about certain things, but it is what it is. Like what I do has been working. I try to, I try to consistently improve upon what I do. So that's what everybody needs to try to do. I mean, that, that's what I do. And, and again, to, to just kind of stay on point is that these rates are just, they're just going to be shit. They are just what they are. And people need to realize that don't bash the next driver that admits to taking a shit rate like you're somebody better because most of you aren't like that's the that's the short and sweet of that one uh, again if you're getting a great rate coming out of there like I applaud you like that's great if you have a way to share that with everybody else to where it doesn't take that from you you know do so if not you know keep it to yourself stay quiet you know and and hold on to that. I mean, good for you, for real. Uh, I wish there was a better way to uh, go about uh, rates down there. I wish there was a secret. There just is no secret. You're at the mercy of of the competition, and obviously, people are in business to make money. So these brokers, you know, a good portion of the time, they're giving the loads to the lowest bid. Now, mind you. 70 cents or 65 cents that isn't even that, that isn't even the lowest like i've talked to somebody that gets freight that comes across there on a consistent basis like that they have a a uh, warehouse down there and they've had a bid as low as 25 cents 25 cents that isn't something i heard from a driver that heard from a driver that heard from a driver this is something that I personally heard from the second in charge of a freight forwarder that's located down there. That's how shitty this is. You know, there's plenty of people that are down there. They'll take something really cheap, and then they're going to try to get another really cheap one with it. And they're going to put it together in the same van and take it. And that's, that's not how it's supposed to be. That's supposed to be, you know, against the rules and regs of, of what the customer is doing and what is going on period so don't bash people for their rates especially if you've done the same thing or worse if you have a if you have some something that's productive to you know put into that conversation put into it i just uh i just get a little frustrated when i when i see a post like that and the way people react to it like like they don't take cheap freight like i've been around long enough doing this you know it ain't like i've been around forever doing this but i've been around long enough doing this and have talked to enough people that i know you're full of shit like you've taken some cheap ass shit you've done some shitty ass rates at some point if you've been doing this long enough you have definitely taken some bad rates and if you if you say you haven't i I'm not going to believe you. I'm not going to buy it just because, as I said, my personal experience and, and 
contacts have said differently. Doesn't mean I'm 100% correct on that, but if there's somebody out there that has never taken some shit rates, again, I applaud you, and, you know, <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that, to be honest, because uh, I'd love to meet that person, because obviously that person probably has some knowledge that I could I could improve my situation with, so, uh, but overall, everybody's done it, everybody's had to take a hit, uh, and again, uh, like with the Laredo rates, that, that carrier I was with before that was doing regularly 65 and less coming out of there, uh, I got to the point that I was like, I'm not going into those areas for less than 90 cents when the contracted rate was 80 cents because I didn't want to go there. I was tired of going there and overall I was averaging less per mile, per loaded mile than what my contracted rate is because that's what should never happen. When you put all your money into what you earn and you average it out into your loaded miles, your loaded mile rate should never be below your contracted rate. If it is, now, let me, let me say this. It'd be different if it was like a penny off, you know, your contracted rate is a dollar and you're, or you're getting 99. That's different than your contracted rate is 80 and you're averaging 75. Like that shouldn't happen. There shouldn't be that much of a gap between what's going on. And if it is, that's because you're obviously going into a lot of places that are, you know, paying you cheap rates to come out of. All right, so to summarize, all I'm trying to say is don't be so quick to knock the next guy. Uh, all of us have been there and we all need to be aware of that and like I said too many people just want to be seen as being better than the next driver I get it I mean we're all competitive by nature I'm sure and so I get it to a point I'm competitive you know I want to be better than the next guy as well I mean I there, there's no there's no denying that but at the same time you know be objective about how you treat certain situations and how you treat and, and react to certain uh, things that other drivers are doing 